Boba? Bonner? Dude, come here. I just saw you and I'm like, I can't. Hey, dude. I want you to I want, I want you to give your family the biggest freaking oh. hug, bud. I'm so sorry. Man. Oh, it's okay. I'm so sorry. Oh, it's all love. It's all love. I've been fighting all you guys. Oh, it's all love. I'm so sorry. Oh, no worries. Thank you. No, tell him. Thank you. I will. I'm, I'm going to send something to Conlon directly. Okay. The choir was going to do something, and then the GoFundMe, I was like, oh, God, the GoFundMe took off, and then yeah, the choir's going to do so. Yeah. So as soon as we can, oh. I'm going to get some. I'm going to try to come tomorrow if it's appropriate. If it's close, just tell me if it's going to be, okay, I, I if it's you. just very, you, if you it's. Do you have Conlon's number? Uh, I think I have emo, but I, I didn't know okay. if you guys were just doing. I think it's just, it, fa I think it might be family. Okay, so. then, because yeah. you were talking about video, Zoom. Zoom link. Link. Zoom as well. Okay. Um, okay. Okay.
gave up. I gave up. Yeah. And he went and talked to the administrator. Okay. He learned all the fun and stuff. Now. Something with HR. Yeah. Yeah. He's the, he's the applicator. Did you record that whole conversation I had outside? I hope you didn't get all that. No, but you I, probably I, heard it. I probably did. Thank, thank you. Thank you. It was as soon pretty as I tragic. Running away, it was pretty tragic. I, I didn't know if you were going to the bathroom or not. No. So I'm like, I better thank cut you. his audio. So. Thank you. You're the man. Now it'll show up on some internet page. Hey man, do you have my math? Do you have my? Do you have my drugs? <laughs> what now? Like, oh. Devastated. Yeah. I'm just gonna make sure I have my yeah my stuff is not dying. Well, we'll I'll take it some time to do some things. You're so okay. You okay. Working on that. So welcome, welcome everyone. Um, we're about to start off our first WeLift Wednesday event of the year. So we're excited to start 2023 off with Tom over here. He's gonna teach us about LinkedIn. Um, we're excited to be starting off this year uh, with WeLift. Um, we love our WeLift events. We have a couple other events coming out throughout this month. Um, we have our kickoff event on the 12th, uh, which I believe is on a Thursday, and then we have uh, Discovering Your Purpose with Brianna in a couple weeks, as well as Opportunity Quest, which will be a lot similar to like a Shark Tank experience, or if you were involved with our Seed for Startups event last semester. It's going to be very similar to that, but this will be actual competition. We'll see our students pitching their business models, uh, competing for the grand prize. So we're excited for that. And then our next WeLift event will be on the 1st of February, which will talk about the science of emotions. Um, so we're really excited for all of that. And, well, let's kick it off over here to Tom. So, all right. There you go. We'll do, so actually, no, I'm Mike. You're Mike. You don't need And that. I have a big voice. If you can't hear me, tell me. Um, but hi, everybody. I'm Tom Gleason. It's really great to be here. Um, who was it? Megan. Megan approached me. Oh, hi, Megan. I didn't see you. How are you? Good. All right. So uh, we'll just get this up here. And we'll go like this. While he's pulling this up, make sure to sign in on the QR code on all the tables so that okay. we can just see how many people are showing up and just check in. That'd be awesome. All right. So um, today we're going to talk about LinkedIn. And I think we were, we were titling this Making the Most of Your LinkedIn Profile. And not really knowing where everybody's at with LinkedIn, how much you use it, don't use it, starting to use it. I decided, well, what we'll do is we'll just try to start very basic and um, build from there and find out more about what you're doing and we can try to address questions and things. But let me just give you a little intro. So I'm, I'm the recruiter here at UVU. I work in people and culture, which is uh, human resources in the past life. We're, we're rebranding to people and culture to sound more human. So I do recruiting. Uh, mostly for staff positions here at UVU, uh, more like on the business side of the institution. Um, so I got here in 2020. Um, before that, uh, I recruited in tech and IT for about 20 plus years is my experience. So I've worked in environments where if we don't hire somebody, they'll get rid of the recruiter. I mean, that's just how it <laughs> works. So many times, actually, when you do hire people and recruiting, you, you end up hiring yourself out of a job, too. But uh, so it was a very fast-paced environment. We had to have tools at our disposal to help us uh, find people, find them now, get them to respond to us. So my world, the way I see LinkedIn is, sorry, my world is, it, I'm seeing the world through a recruiter's lens, OK? 
which there's a lot of sales, there's a lot of marketing in there, but um, I'm a recruiter. So uh, if I talk too much about recruiting, just understand that's why I'm talking about recruiting. And I will try to talk about your businesses or your ventures or your needs as I learn about them as we discuss this. Um, so in that, in the last 15 years or so, probably since 2005, four or five, I started using LinkedIn. And over the years, I've just used it more and more. We have tools that allow us to, um, LinkedIn Recruiter, for instance, is a, is a kind of a LinkedIn on, on steroids. It gives us access to people immediately, and we can see a lot of information about people. Um, but I've also used just plain LinkedIn that's available to the public, and you just create an account, and you go in, you log in, and you set up a profile. And uh, been very successful in finding people that way using, using that tool. So um, today, what I want to do is just share some basics about LinkedIn. And hopefully, we'll all come away with a better understanding of LinkedIn's potential to help you in your businesses, your ventures, whatever it is you're doing, your careers. Um, and then also um, see ways to improve your profile so you can find people and be found. Um, so we're going to discuss uh, what LinkedIn can do. Basically, I see LinkedIn as a platform for you, for you to connect on and to communicate on, for starters. And also, um, we're going to discuss basic um, kind of how to set up a profile. And, and so this is going to be an interactive. Um, I don't want to sit here and and try to lecture after having 12 days off work. <laughs> Coming back yes, just yesterday, we're still a little foggy here after the holiday break. But um, what I want to be able to do is answer questions, or at least try to answer your questions, uh, and then leave some time to maybe 20 minutes or so. Hopefully you brought your laptops or you have your devices that you can access your LinkedIn profile, and we can kind of just work on it together. I can just kind of roam the around the, the room and um, answer questions as we go through it. I know you're all eating too, so this will be interesting. See how that works out. Are you um, okay if we just shout out a question? Yeah, the, I was gonna. I was gonna say that they. I, yeah. And so I'm open to just having a conversation about it. I've got slides. I've got where I wanted to go, but. If you want to go somewhere else, you want me to go <laughs> somewhere else, that, we, can work, we can arrange that too. But yeah, I, I do have a question for people, if this is okay. How many of you are, and you don't have to answer if you don't, how many are, are using LinkedIn now or are on a, have an account? Okay. Anybody not have an account? Not that you, it's totally okay. I'm glad you're here. Um, because I always think about going over to the Career Center here at UVU and going, hey, what do you guys do for LinkedIn? <laughs> I want to help your students you know, use it. Um, so I know uh, there's a, yeah, LinkedIn is very useful um, as you're coming into, like uh, if you're graduating or, or uh, a student, um, you're trying to get, a, uh, get your profile up and running. So, and so out of everybody who's, who's got LinkedIn, do you feel like you're using it? to your greatest potential? Do you, do you feel like you've, anybody go like, hey, I know I'm, I'm a marketer, I'm a social media whiz, I just came here to see what you'd say that might. I'm a marketer and I still feel like I don't. Okay. I'm using 10% okay. of the potential of LinkedIn. Yeah. Okay, all right. So here's how I would say LinkedIn. For me, this is what I think of LinkedIn. I think it's used for branding. I think it's a, it's a place where we can say, who are we? What's our value proposition? Um, you know, what, what am I looking for? What do I need? And then as we're building our profiles, let's keep all that in mind because we're trying to talk to an audience that may, may provide us, you know, um, what we're looking for. Or, or we can flip that around and say, I offer stuff, so who am I trying to offer it to? So how should I sound? How, and you know what? It, your LinkedIn profile, there's no rule that says you can't change your profile based on what you're doing career-wise or project-wise, I mean, you could go in and change it all up, just like a resume. If you want to you just you know, have four resumes for different marketing, sales, you know, recruit, whatever, um, there's no rule. You can, you can use LinkedIn however you'd like to use it and promote your brand, whatever that brand is. So also, it's a great place to find people. So I say find people. Um, 
Who do you want to find and why, right? Um, and so today, um, if you get a chance, we're going to do this. We'll search for a profile that you want to connect with. Maybe we do it now. Look somebody up right now you're not connected to, but you know them. There's low-hanging fruit out there for connections. You could just, just connect with me if you want. It's pretty easy to find me. Tom Gleason, UVU. I don't want to, I, mean, I just love to share a story. Yeah. Um, a couple of months ago, I went to a friend's wedding, and there was a family friend that I hadn't talked to. Yeah, there's a mic thing for yeah. that. Um, there's a family friend I hadn't seen in a long while that does really well in business. And so when I was talking with him, I just naturally started turning into my job here at planning events and a bunch of other things. And it was really cool just because it was a quick like, hey, I haven't seen you in a while. We're talking business right now. Let's just get connected on LinkedIn and communicate later. Um, and that's one thing I was glad to have LinkedIn for was just that random moment of connecting back with someone and having it as a communication resource instead of just grabbing a phone number and, and right. messaging. It was just a nice way to kind of compartmentalize like, hey, this is a friend, but like a business person and I want to get connected that way. And I yeah. thought that was cool to have LinkedIn at that time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love I love LinkedIn Messenger. Um, I use that all the time, uh, even in recruiting uh, people who I'm, I'm trying to recruit. Lot, oftentimes, all my conversations with them are parked in LinkedIn because I kind of go, look, that's, that's where I found them. Let's just stay here. You know, At some point, maybe we'll move to email or move to text or move to another medium. But um, it's, it's, it's quite the tool. Um, so finding people, um, you know, search for people and connect to them. Uh, we'll, we'll, try to do, we'll, we'll do that today. And then also thinking about how, how can we be found. Now, I live in the world of being found. So I try to act like, well, I want, I want to find people. So I'm going to design my LinkedIn profile so I can be found. Um, and because it kind of goes both ways. You know, there may, I, I don't know, it's kind of like a, Karma thing. It's like you, you want to, maybe you have a business and you're trying to you're trying to sell something to somebody and you're, or your your market, and I think being open to being approached too is is fair. Probably is a good practice. Maybe you it'll help you understand how best to design your LinkedIn profile is to make it make it very 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 searchable and findable uh, by people. Um, and we'll talk more about the profile and what to put into it and stuff like that, but. Um, so think about words and phrases that you can use that describe you uh, that will help attract the people you're trying to attract. And even if you do, another thing to think about is even if you find somebody or maybe, maybe you didn't find them on LinkedIn, maybe you were just given an email and you send them a message and, you, and you're corresponding, probably one of the first things they'll do what do we usually do when we want to know about somebody anymore? If you see, see somebody on the news, you're like, oh, I'm going to look him up on LinkedIn. <laughs> see, like, what's that guy do? You know, what's this person do? And um, people will go to your LinkedIn profile. I don't think they're going to go to your Facebook page first, though I use Facebook sometimes for recruiting, and that's interesting. But, um, but people will go to your LinkedIn profile, and that's what they're going to know about you. Whatever you have on there, that's it. And I look at a lot of profiles, oftentimes that just have their experience, their date, and the place they worked, and that's it, and where they graduated from. And maybe, maybe they have a little one pair, maybe a couple lines of summary. But there's not very much information there. So I think it's a missed opportunity. And as much as you're comfortable, put more information out so people can understand who, who you are better. So um, let's see. And then also, we connect to people. So we reach out to people on LinkedIn. Um, uh, yeah, like I said, we can, we can look up profiles and, and connect to people. We can communicate. We can comment. We can share ideas on LinkedIn. We can be a part of the, the conversations that are happening on LinkedIn. Um, like most social media platforms, you know, there's, there's a conversation going on. There's posts that are happening. Post, posts might be people you know that are posting. Posts might be reposts from somebody you know. And maybe it's not the person who's, who's posting the repost that you want to know, but it's the person's original post. That's the person you want to know, and you're not connected to them. But suddenly now, you've got their names, and you like what they're writing about, or they're in the market that you're interested in, or they have something that 
either you can offer them or there's an opportunity there for you to offer or for them to offer you something. So there's all of that. So, and basically, I just see this as a, an opportunity to build relationships, to grow, to you know, re build relationships, to benefit everybody, um, help you achieve your goals, and to expand. And I think you do that with relationships. So any questions about any of that? Anything come to mind? Yeah, go ahead. Tom Gleason. Yeah, you view. Yeah, you view. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've got my profile up here, and I was gonna pull that up here. Okay, so let's just talk about. Let's talk about. Um, oh, come on. Okay, just a second. I don't know why it's not. There we go. That's what I wanted. Okay. So the the features on on pro on uh, on LinkedIn. Basically, you have your profiles. Um, your profile is all of this. Let me scroll down. I was, I was actually going to try to do that, but it didn't work. <laughs> I think I, oh, I can do it on here. That's why I was going to do it on there. Um, but you can go down here, and I can see all my profile. And actually, I'll just blow this up. So here's my profile. And... Um, uh, So we have, in the profile, we have different features that we can use. And we have search. So if we want to search for people, search for companies. Um, for instance, oh, look, it's, it's Megan. Can I use your profile? There he goes. Like I searched, like Megan, she reached out to me and said, hey, can you help us out? And I'm like, yeah, let's do this. So I, I looked her up on LinkedIn, you know, just kind of see, hey. Is this you, the, the artwork? Yeah, that's, I stopped and went, that's really cool. You know, um, I think it's not, just, it's not just the profile, but it's, it's when we read through somebody's sort of representation of like, this is our life, this is what I do. I think adding these, these tidbits like art or media or a project or something that's just, it's not work related. It's just human related, something that just adds color to this, to this person's experience, which is a really nice touch. I like that. So, but here's the, the search. Um, we can plug in keywords to search for, uh, like, uh, if there's a company you're interested in knowing about, you can search for the company there. Um, and within that company profile, um, you'll learn about the company. Uh, you can learn about who works there, or you can search a person that you know works at a company. Dana, can I pick on you? Absolutely. Do you how, do you do you use LinkedIn a lot in your in your <laughs> account management your your biz I world? Do to a point, yeah. Just the other day, I needed to connect with the company. Uh, I looked up to I worked there. Someone I worked with for very close to a while ago is there now. So we reached out. Now we're starting to do business. Okay, good. That was a recent thing. That was yeah. Friday. Oh, awesome. Okay. But yes, I use it. And in my world, I, I, I kind of live here in this, this search box. I, I search like if I'm looking for people to do certain <coughs> types of jobs, I will, I will just enter like if I'm looking for an accountant or a CPA. I, I mean, I can do that right here. I can just, you know, do CPA. And um, the nice thing about the search is that you can search people, companies, jobs, posts, groups, events, products, schools, of course. On and on, and then there's all this additional filter stuff that you can do. Some of this is, you can customize it, but there's a lot of information that you can search through. I'm always interested in people. Um, so here I get 1.400 million, 400,000 people, and I'm like, okay, I'm not really gonna go through that many profiles. But if I just say I localize it a little bit and go, I just, I just wanna know what's, what's in Utah. Say I just wanna find somebody here locally, um, and I just go Utah, and you'll see that list dumbed down quite a bit. Okay, it's down to 5,000, still a lot. Um, and I could, I could go in here and I could start putting in, um, David, yeah. Uh, I could put in senior or junior, like you're gonna be a junior CPA. I'm trying to think of other titles. But the point is, 
I can, I can try to dumb down this list. I can also go in here and say, well, I want to pull from certain companies, and I can add a company that I want to pull from. And, uh, but, you know, I just start, you know, s sourcing through these contacts, and I'm sure you can apply. Oh, look, it's a UVU, Pierce, UVU grad. Awesome. Um, but I'm sure you can, like, apply this to um, other uh, careers or, or projects you're working on. Um, to source people, to find people that you're looking for. Uh, so search, that's a, cool, that's a cool little feature. I like that. Um, and then this also has the means to, to um, manage your network, so all your connections. So if I hit my network, I have all my, all my contacts here. Um, and then there's suggestions. And so anybody ever? Use this like this, your, your network. Okay, you go in here and manage it. Okay. I'm curious, Tom, about the yes. color. So I see myself, I just you know, oh, sent you sorry. a request, and my, there's a title portion that's pink versus what, yeah, I'm curious, is that oh, something you oh, customize? No, or no, or? no. I, had, I left, left multi-highlight on it, and I wanted to talk about that, okay. that extension. Um, remind me at the end. I'm going to talk about Because there was a question that was asked. You pass it on to me about, hey, how do I increase my sales? Or how do I get to customers and, and you know, use LinkedIn? And so I, I, I have one slide at the end I'm going to share about that. It's kind of a high level marketing uh, uh, slide. So, so, um, so anyway, you've got, you've got my network, uh, manager connections. You, if, you're, if you're in the job market, uh, you can, LinkedIn has uh, LinkedIn jobs, so people can, companies can post jobs. We post jobs here at UVU. You can go in here and you can, you can um, search for jobs. Um, that's pretty straightforward. And then, let's see here. Whoops. And then the messaging feature. So if I'm sitting here in my profile, what's kind of cool is... You can go to Messenger here. Um, this will just take you to a general page of you know all your all your contacts or your you know your messages that you have, or you can actually in the bottom right hand corner, message messaging just sits right there, and you can just click on that little carrot there and pull up your messages, so you don't have to leave the uh, the page you might be on here. So. And let's see. And then, and then groups. Does anybody use groups at all? Anybody members of groups or, sorry, if that you, okay. There's a group feature here that you can search. You can search like a professional group. Maybe you're a marketing person. You want to join a marketing group on LinkedIn and just be a part of the conversation. Or you want to join a, uh, I don't know, Maybe you're selling something and you want to join a page that represents potential clients. You don't go in there and you're selling so much because they have rules about that. You, you may be going in there just to kind of get your name out and you're part of the conversation within that industry and the, and the people that are part of that group could be potential customers, okay? Uh, and, then, and then just like any social media platform like we're used to, um, Facebook and others, we have a news feed and that's the home button here. So there you go. This is good because in here, like I mentioned before, um, your contacts are posting information. And they may post a thought leader. And you're like, oh, I need to follow that thought leader. I think following thought leaders is really good. And, and LinkedIn gives you access. So some really big names, and maybe not super big names, but they, in your world, they are. They're, they're a serious thought leader that you want to follow, and there's people that you can follow. You can click on their profiles, and you can, you know, you can do follow and just follow them. Um, you don't have to necessarily connect to them, but you can follow them. And um, I always notice on here, like at UVU, I always notice um, President Jimenez posts a lot, obviously. <laughs> And Kyle Reyes posts a lot. Um, and I think, I mean, I always try to like what they're, 
they're doing, and then that shows up in my feed, and I'm engaged, and we just, it gives you an opportunity to look alive. If, if I, I, I've, I've, I've searched many of profiles where um, I'm like, oh, this person has really no, there's no activity. And I don't know what that means. And I'm not saying I don't reach out to people who don't have activity on there, but sometimes I just go, oh, well, maybe they didn't want to be found, or they don't have a photo, or <clears throat> I'm not sure what they want. And, and then I'm sitting there wondering what's going on, and then what do I do with that information? I, I, it's, be somebody, if you really want to be found, look engaging. Yeah. I go ahead, Dana. Because <clears throat> I do use LinkedIn quite a bit, but... Well, I will go and look at their profile, but I also go look at what things they like just yes. to find out, is there something we have in common? Yeah. Um, and if they're doing X, if they're not following anything that is related to X, it makes me wonder how involved they are in what they do. Yeah. That's just the way I am. Mm -hmm. But it gives me things, you know, because when you first meet somebody and you meet him, it's hard to say, hi, here I am. Yeah. It's nice to say, hey, I noticed you're following this person or this influencer or this. And it gives you a starting ground to start. Yeah. That's yep. what I do. And yep. so I, I don't have as many as I should, but the more I have, I know it makes people feel more comfortable to reach out. Like, okay, we have something in common, not yeah. dude, this guy, I don't know anything about him. And think, and think about it. Other people that are on LinkedIn, I, I think we, wanna, we, we want to engage. You, if you're doing social media, you think, well, I, I want to. Or maybe we thought we were supposed to do that. And there's, there's, what Dana's saying is, it's, you know, you can engage as much as you want. I think even if you're just liking stuff that's going on there, or if you see somebody who has an interesting comment, you can just reach right out to them and engage them on a side conversation, go to lunch, go, you know, whatever, set up an appointment. Um, and I think the more that, I mean, you, you can really thrust yourself into that you know, that world of really being engaged with everybody on there and that's what you're doing and then you're not doing everything else you need to do. So, you know, there's that. But, but there's a lot of opportunity there for you to, to, you know, if you want to network. I have a friend, she's, she's another recruiter. She's just, man, she talks to everybody. She's always engaged with people all over the country, different uh, thought leaders. She's always, she's my source, really. I, I go, you go out and do it all. You go find it all. And she throws me all kinds of stuff, YouTube videos and uh, workshops, seminars, and all kinds of stuff. Like, this will help us with our recruiting. And I mean, it's just, it, there's a lot out there to, to find. So um, any questions on the features? I know I'm going really basic on this. Go ahead. There's one more that I think should be on okay. the list, which is completely missing, um, articles. And I think that's a brand yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, I, I don't have it sitting right here in front of me. I had somebody else's profile where um, LinkedIn allows you in your profile. I mean, these were just the basic, just basic. But I mean, there's, there's other features. But the articles is that you can actually publish your articles. I mean, you can publish your certifications. You can publish your art. You can publish all kinds of media. You can publish like the, the articles. There's, there, there's actually a section that. Um, you can just place all the stuff that you've written. It's all right there in, in the profile. You can, you can write anything in here as like a blog post? Yes. Just to yeah. demonstrate your own thought leadership. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And build, build your brand that way, for sure. That's all there. Um, any, who had another question? Yeah. Yeah. Um, as far as the posting frequency, do you have a recommendation of how frequently you should post to appear active? Because I don't get on as much as I should. But there are some people that say search engine optimization for certain platforms. You have to post every day. Some say once a week. I don't, Do you have any recommendations? I don't. I don't really know. That would be a that would be a, go over to marketing and ask the, ask the guy. No, I I really don't know. I, I I can't see that it's going to hurt you to, you know, I to overpost. I don't I don't I don't know if there's a thing about overposting, <laughs> even underposting. I mean, it's just it's it's you know some people like to do certain things with the tools they have. And, and just because we have available all these tools on LinkedIn doesn't mean everyone's taking advantage of all of them. You kind of find your sweet spot. Maybe you're really good in going to groups, and you're really good at just communicating to a group and really getting along with a group, whereas maybe you don't write articles or something. It just depends on our own personality and what we're comfortable with. But there's a, there's a wide variety of, of opportunities on LinkedIn, and this is sort of the, just the intro to it, because we don't have a ton of time to go through all of it,
But as you get using LinkedIn, I would you know say, hey, go in and look at all the features you're not look you're not using. Really, you know, I mean, there's a lot of resources online that you can also access. You know, go on YouTube, Google it, whatever. Go ahead. LinkedIn said at least once today and no more than five times today. Okay, <laughs> which is, yeah. 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 Thank you. So, I w with the time we have left, um, what time is it now? Let's see. 12:30. Okay. Probably about 10 more minutes. <clears throat> then I wanted us to kind of just get a chance to look at our own profiles and stuff. But I wanted to just talk about setting up the profile really quick and get your thoughts on this too as well. And these are just, I would say, these are just simple best practices. And this may not be your best practice. I, I, if we take anything away from this today, I really want you to think of that this, this, this is me. This is not you. This is me. This is my profile or your profile. What you do with it is, is what you do. It's your personality. Um, so that being said about uploading a professional photo, I, I thought I'd start with that one. Professional photo. Well, that's if you want to be professional. <laughs> And LinkedIn is, <laughs> LinkedIn is built for professionals. I get that. Okay, of course, the last couple of years, maybe it's not as much. It's, it, <laughs> there's a lot of interesting conversations going on on LinkedIn. Um, but as, as a standard, you know, putting up a professional photo, I would say one that want, you want to use that best represents you. Whereas, oh, I didn't, I had it up here. Um, like, this is my, this is my team's photo, okay? So this is Teams. This is internal. This is my internal photo. I was on my VP's <coughs> exercise bike at Christmas, and I had too much eggnog. <laughs> and so, no. And I, I thought, gosh, I would love to put that up on LinkedIn sometime because <laughs> that really says that's who I am. Do you but, not consider that professional? I'm confused. No, I know, I know. But in Teams, I'm okay because I, I like it on Teams, so I use that. But I just pulled up a, a profile today that had, oh, where did it go? Um, I wanted to share this one with you. Where did it go? Okay. Okay. Here it is. Search. Okay. So. Here's Mel. I don't know Mel. I was just searching artists, and, and, and uh, that tells me a lot about Mel. And he works, at, he works at, at Marvel Studios. And I think that that's pretty professional. I think that's, that says he's a concept artist. So when I see like artists, graphic designers, user experience type people, um, people working around arts. I don't know, I kind of like that they throw that art thing in there. Even how they might, if it's, if, if it's a writer, I like that there's a, there's a certain look to their, to their profile because it reflects their, their personality. <laughs> one, other, one other person I thought was really interesting that I, I sourced, I was looking for um, a software developer and <laughs> I go through tons and tons of profiles all the time. I don't know if you can see this. I'll try to blow this up. All I saw on this profile was this photo. This is the professional <laughs> photo. This is Eric sitting in a canyon. And I remember when I saw that, it instantly I went, that tells me that he's open to new opportunity. <laughs> And I actually reached out to him, and I ultimately hired him at that company. That was my last company I worked for. And I talked to him about that, and he says, yeah, I, I had just quit, and I was out, uh, I don't know, seven months. He wasn't doing it. He goes, I, I was just trying to figure out what I want to do next. I had done some stuff. I was, you know, I want to do something else now. So I can't even see his face, but I can see, I don't know, that caught my eye. I just, I... Like I said, that, that photo brought him an opportunity that he probably wouldn't have had. 
I so. just want to make a quick plug that we're having professional photos oh, yes. available for anyone as one of our WeLift events on April 5th. Oh, okay. So if you'd like to come April 5th, it's WeLift Photo Day, and our fabulous photographers will be available um, to take professional headshots or any fun personality photos that you'd like to take. And also product photos. If you have a product that you're selling, you'd like product for your website, um, feel free to sign up for that. Uh, information will be sent out after this event, so you can register early. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so anyway, just, just going through this really quickly here. Um, well, people ask me about the photo. I don't know if that's going to help you with the photo at all. Um, some people go and do portraits and put a very professional portrait up. Others take just a picture, a social media post picture or something, and they go, I like that. I'm going to put that up there. And they dress it up, and they put it up, make it work. So up to you. Like, your photo is really nice. I mean, Dana, your photo is really nice. I mean. It really is just up to us as individuals what we're trying to project. And maybe our audience will really appreciate, you know, Milton's, you know, uh, uh, cartoon photo more than maybe they'll appreciate my crazy, uh, you know, eggnog photo. So anyway, um, <clears throat> anyway, so the other thing is uh, you want to add your industry, your location. This is all just simple stuff. Um, you can actually customize your URL. There's a place to go into LinkedIn. Uh, to change, my, mine is just Tom Gleason. I don't know how I just got that. I was just LinkedIn slash Tom Gleason and that's it. I've never changed it. Uh, but you could put in there, you know, graphic designer, you know, whatever, um, Milton, the, the, the graphic designer, um, and change that, change that URL. Um, okay, so let's, <clears throat> let me see, before we go to summary, Let's see here. OK, I would say that you can easily go in there and, and put your, 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 your experience. Uh, for some, it may be job experience, um, or project experience, passion project experience, I, whatever, depending on what your nature of your business is. But let's just say if it's just you're putting your track record of your career, I did this, and I did that, and I did this, and I did this. That's pretty straightforward to, to, to list that out. It's all about how you want to describe it after that. And we can talk through that. How, what, what, well, how, how long should it be? Well, um, this is how I would describe it. <clears throat> I, on my own profile, what I tried to do was, in my, my world, I want to be found. I, my, my focus is to, is to be found by people for different reasons. But I try to put as much information in here with uh, keywords, buzzwords, if you will, that if somebody is searching, I'm going to pop up in their search. OK? Um, so my summary really lets people know all the kinds of tools I've worked with and the technologies I've worked with and what I've recruited for and stuff like that. And then in all my jobs that I've, that I've worked, I've worked at a lot of places, I've just always tried to describe, you know, what did I do? Who did I work with? What did I work on? Um, again, hoping that these words will be picked up in a search. And then I always give a description of the company that I worked for. Because somebody may end up wanting to search a company, and they get me, and they're actually looking for a job. So there's that. So I don't know how that applies to everyone else individually, but that's kind of what I do. Um, any thoughts on that? Other thoughts on what to put in your, your job description, in your, your description under, under jobs? My question is, from your perspective of a recruiter, what are things that show up on people's profiles that makes you say no? Like, I don't want to work with that person. So, like, things to avoid. I can't really say that. Can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> really, I can't say that. I, I think it goes back to the, the, the first thing I said, that I don't see a photo or I don't see a lot of activity. Mm -hmm. I, it, it doesn't attract me so much to spend a lot of time there, because I'll come across a Milton, and like, I'm, I'm still talking about him. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but I thought that was cool, or talking about Eric and him sitting at a cliff, on a cliff. And I didn't even look at his description of what he'd been doing too much. I was just captivated by his photo. Mm -hmm. So I think it's more about attracting than saying, oh, I'm not, a, I'm not attract. Oh, like, here's the thing. Back in the day, Dana and I will relate. Um, <laughs> 
No, we're related. Anyway, <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, that, you know, resumes, it used to be resumes. We cared so much about the weight of the paper. Mm -hmm. What weight did you do? Uh, yeah, weight and, and, and the color. Oh, yeah, what are you going to put on it? And then you were worried about format, not even what you're going to put on. Then format, is it formatted right? Will somebody look at it? Because they're going to look at all these other resumes and go, oh, no, it's not formatted right. Throw it, throw it out. I have worked with people before who have, this isn't me, mm -hmm. managers I've worked for before that will look at a profile and say, oh, it's not a top 100 school. Oh, it's, oh, it's Utah, U University of Utah. I don't want anybody from University of Utah. I've had people say that before. Not because it was University of Utah, no offense. Or they say, oh, we don't want anybody from BYU. Mm -hmm. I don't want anybody from UVU. I can't believe how many people I've hired from UVU over the years that are doing just fine. Um, it's really weird. It's not, I mean, just what people think they can do anyway. So, um, so other than that, uh, back to, sorry, this is kind of wonky the way this flips back and forth. Let's see if I can get this back up. OK. Under the experience of the job, you can actually add in skills that support that job. I'd say do that. It's another place to put tools, experience, or, or, or um, types of things that you're doing and put those underneath your, your job experience. And I, I can show you just a really quick example. Um, where did it go? There it is. So under mine, for instance, even here in UVU, yesterday, we, we switched over an applicant tracking system. So I put that first under experience um, right here. I think it was one of, indeed sponsored jobs. I use that a lot. And NeoGov is our applicant tracking system. And then these are just skills that I, I use as a recruiter. Uh, same here under the next place that I worked. Indeed, sourcing tech. Just to kind of say, OK, these are areas that I emphasize. So, there's a place where you can put those skills. That's where they go. Um, I think LinkedIn says, you know, at least five is a good, good place to start. I, I, you can put more. And I, when I'm searching for people, oftentimes it's those skills that come up highlighted that they put into their profile, that that's the reason I'll click on their resume from the, the general kind of search results page. So. Uh, listing education is pretty straightforward. Um, and then I still want to talk about summary because I think that's something we can talk about individually as well. But um, I would say the rule used to be, I don't know what it is now, but we tried to connect at least 175 people. I don't know if you want to look up, what's the, what's the, you're, you're, you're my checker. Go ahead, fact checker, do it. Uh, please, thank you. What's your name? Carrie. Carrie, thank you so much. Um, so uh, I would say if today you could connect to 50 people, I imagine you know a lot of people and getting connected to at least 50 of them, of just people we know, I'll call it the low hanging fruit. You don't know who they know and maybe they know a lot of people that you know. So it's kind of like it's here in the area. but. As you start to connect to more people, you're going to be turned on to other people and learn about more people. So that's why start with the people you know and go from there. And you can also go with people who, um, as you search for people, search for people maybe in your industry that you're trying to focus on that are connected to like 4,000 people. Like they're just these, you know, they're just huge, huge LinkedIn users. And they'll know a lot of people. And oftentimes they'll, they'll allow you to connect with them. So. Yeah, I know that's what that's what yeah, that's why I had fifty on here. Yes. Yes. So yeah. Can you talk about the difference between connecting versus following someone? Well, I think you can connect you can connect and they're one of your, your contacts. They're actually in your network. And then there's people outside of your network that allow you to see what they're posting. If I have this wrong, correct me. Anybody else has an opinion on this? So I can follow them, and they may have, um, they may have a, I don't know, they may be posting every so often, but you'll get those posts, even though they're not in your, in your news feed. 
things, but I think it, what happens is so that. More for thought leaders and follow thought leaders. Maybe yeah. I'll never get a chance to meet John Mueller. Yeah, but yeah. To follow him. And they make themselves available to follow. I, and I think I have 1,200 followers. I don't even know how I got 1,200 followers. I have followers. And there's also some people that you can't connect with unless you know their email address. Like they yeah. Have their profile, so then it's a little bit more restrictive yeah. and exclusive. So your only option is to follow them. Mm -hmm. And then. Yeah. They don't want to connect yeah. with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to have you follow them. Right. It, and so then is there any benefit? Because there's some people that I know very locally, and when I go onto their LinkedIn, there's an option to it follow, it's a button, but then I have to click into the three dots to then say connect. I don't necessarily want to follow. Maybe, I, maybe that's relationship arrogance. I don't necessarily want to follow you. I want to connect you. I get following the thought leaders, but I, I don't know I, if there's a benefit to doing both or just to connect and follow. Unfollow someone. Yeah, then you don't get there. Then you don't get, no. But then you don't see them, probably because you're, you're not going to see them show up in the feed. So, because somebody, say, say they're posting, what was it, five times a day? You're like, okay, you know what? I'm good. I'm going to unfollow for a couple days and follow somebody else. So... Um, the last thing on this list before summary that I would want to make sure to emphasize is listing out volunteering, passion projects. There's actually a section, I didn't include it here, there's volunteering, it's pretty simple. It's, it's listed in kind of in the basic profile setup. Um, I think you have to hunt for the projects. There's, there's projects, there's articles, and there's something else. There's a whole page, and we don't have time to go through it all, but the more that I think you can you can mention, like for instance, this is, this is me. Um, <clears throat> what I did was, I listed out, down here in volunteering, uh, my wife and I started a, an after school uh, theater program at our local elementary school. We're in our 19th year. And, um, so I put that in there, and I oftentimes people go, "Wow, wow, you're doing something," you know. Oh, not that I'm tooting my own horn, but but it it catch it catches people's eyes that you you've been doing something. I see Boy Scouts, I see you know, um, um, uh, people going and building shelters or going building wells, or you know you'll see people doing really interesting things in in their volunteering, and and a lot of times it's not what I was doing up here so much that caught somebody's attention. But they thought, you are engaged uh, in your community. Um, I sing in a choir. Um, I was on the planning commission in my city at one point. I mean, I'm just like, you know, I'm trying to do something. And I, and I think that, that it speaks volumes when you can add that color into your, your profile besides just your work and what you're trying to sell or the business you have, but it is, it's talking about, well, here I am as a human. This is what I like to do when I'm not working. And I do it for free. Or I volunteer, whatever. So, um, so I think that that is really important. Would you put to, passion projects under volunteer as well? Like you could, some, yeah. Like if if you're into writing, or where did it go? There it is. I don't know. Just like your your passion that you're or dancing or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Would you would that go under volunteering? That seems like that's well, an odd place for that to go. Um, like in my case with with the choir. Um, we're not really, we're not really paid. Well, so yeah. you're performing for others, yeah. so that, that would be volunteer. Yeah. But if you're, if you're just like working on building something of your own. Well, there's another section for projects. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of in that article where you, where you get the articles, yeah. and, I'm, and we don't have time to go through all that, but you can put in another, another section that's like pro, called projects. So, um, like I said, there's, this is really just the basics to get, just either get started or just reconsider how we're using it. Um, the only other thing I could say here because of time um, is the summary. People asking you about the summary. Um, what are your thoughts on summary? Those that, are, that filled out their profile, what do you think? What have you done with summary? Any? There's no right or wrong. I'm not looking for like, oh, I, you're wrong. Well, I've always wondered about it. And I've seen people that have literally 
literally one sentence. Okay. And then I have people, you know, that have paragraphs and paragraphs, and I've seen people post about, I love that the salesman just cut to the chase and said that they were a salesman and tr rather than like a, you know, a mutual beneficial leverager, you know. And I like that they cut to the chase, so I took their call versus other people. So I feel like that's the wild, wild west, and that's why I was like, that was yeah. one of my questions. Yeah. Because I don't know. And, 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 and my answer, uh, did you, somebody else have a comment yeah, about it? I've heard people say in your summary, answer the question, so tell me about yourself, mm -hmm. and then just write that in. Yeah. So I've heard, I've heard that. Yeah. I have seen, I, this last year I've looked, I've looked at hundreds and hundreds of profiles, and um, I never see a profile where, oh, they wrote a lot, they wrote too much summary. Oh, I'm going to disregard him. Who asked me about that? Was, did he lock out? Oh, about, oh I, I'm not attracted to that, but I'm not going to reach out to that person because there was too much information. Um, whereas I've seen people who want to express their scientific interests. Maybe, maybe I, I've seen like software engineers that go, oh, their summary was E equals MC squared. Or they, they put a quote from a philosopher and drop the mic. And you're like, okay, they're, they're, they're into that. They're, okay. And, and, and then I read down, well, what are they working on? What are, and there is no summary. Um, I've seen summaries where they were just, hey, if you want to get in touch with me, here's my contact information. You, know, put, you can put your whole email address. You put your phone number in there if you want, even though LinkedIn probably doesn't like it. Um, I used to put my, my contact information right in my name. It was Tom and my email address and my last name. So there's no question about how to get a hold of me or put my phone number right in there if I wanted to. I don't. Uh, I think LinkedIn, LinkedIn cracked down on it. They started pushing us to not do that. So as I would go in and edit it, they'd go, you can't not, not edit this. You have to edit this out. And it wouldn't let me go anywhere. I was, I was stuck there with the app. I, I don't know. I, yeah, I don't know. Um, so summaries, again, I think it goes back to, this is, this is just my opinion, I think it goes back to who are you relative to, well, who are you trying to connect to? So what do you need to do? What's, what's best for you to connect to the audience that you want to connect to? Does your audience want three paragraphs? Like mine has three or four paragraphs, you know? Um, or do they just want to see E equals MC squared? <laughs> you know, do they want to see, see a, a, a really short? Um, I've seen people go, I'm looking. <laughs> I'm looking for a job, and that's it. I'm like, okay, I, I think it's pretty clear what you're, what you're after. <laughs> and that's okay, because sometimes we don't always know what people are, are, are needing. So if they express it, like, oh, good, I know what, I know what you're looking for. So any other... Um, I think the bottom line is on that summary is just have it reflect you relative to who you're trying to talk to. And maybe you try it out and see what happens. Maybe you try a longer profile or a summary versus a shorter one and see if you get more traffic. Do an A-B test and see what happens. I see a lot of entrepreneurs because they're not necessarily looking to be hired. They're, it's really more client focused typically. They tend to focus less about themselves as an entrepreneur but more about their company. Okay. And so they, they tend to, to tailor it like, I am the CEO of this company, here's what we do. And then they talk about the company and the value proposition that they're delivering yeah. to their clients. Yeah. And so that's, I think, kind of where entrepreneurs are leveraging the summary area so that when potential clients come to their page, they understand the value that that individual as a business owner can contribute to them. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I like that. Again, it really is, it's just, who are you? You know, what are you representing? Um, and we all have, probably have different needs if some of us are in biz dev or I'm doing recruiting or somebody's running a business or, 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 or they're selling art or I don't know. It's, it's just all just depends. So um, any other questions on, on just setting up the profile part of it? This is probably a whole nother lecture for a whole nother time, but do you have like a two minute summary of best practices if you're running a business? No, not at, this, not at this moment, no. probably. We don't have two minutes. Yeah. Probably need to. <laughs> <laughs> but we can talk afterwards. Okay. When do we do that? Great. Yeah. 
Um, what I wanted to do the, with the remaining time that we have is just, we kind of went longer than I thought, but that's okay. If we, if we don't just pull up your profiles on your devices, and I can roam around the room for a few minutes if we're still eating and want to just talk about if there's any other questions. Can you do uh, the highlighting thing, though? Oh, thank you for reminding me. I just, the, 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 the clock was getting um, on there. So, okay. Uh, just final thoughts. Branding yourself, be found, find others, follow thought leaders, be unconventional, or you can be unconventional. Um, there's banners on there for hiring and to be found for a job, just so you know. That's there. I can answer, I can talk about that um, after. Um, and just remember, what people see on your LinkedIn profile, if they don't know anything else about you, that's what they know about you now. <laughs> and then they go to your Facebook page. Anyway, okay. All right. Okay. This is um, really quick. Somebody asked this question, and I thought, well, you know, I'm not doing business development. Uh, I'm not trying to sell a product, but what I'm trying to do is sell an opportunity. So I thought, like, you know what? This is all very similar to what I do. <coughs> so if you're trying to find customers, um, how many work with a CRM right now? Contact resource management tool, you have one, right? Okay, and maybe you can comment on this, Dana, maybe. And if I'm off, you let me know. Yeah. But, okay, I know, I know. Uh, uh, what I would say is, <coughs> is get, have your CRM. There are CRMs out there. What, what's a, what, which one do you use by chance? I use Zoho, but I've used Dynamics. Okay, okay, okay. And in my world, I've used, I've used tools that allow me to um, go search a LinkedIn profile, and then from that profile, the CRM will extract the contact information from LinkedIn, and it'll actually then go out into wherever it goes out to research. It'll grab email addresses for, the, for this person and put them into their profile right into the CRM. It's crazy. And then in the CRM, um, they'll have uh, a feature to do drip cam campaigns. You can build sequences. You can build three or four you know, email instances where you send out the introduction and then they don't reply and then another one goes out six days later and then another one goes out seven days later until they reply or they don't reply. That has worked phenomenally for me. Think like, oh, email still works. But um, it does, it, work, it works for me. But you can also do the same thing for phone numbers. It can extract, go find phone numbers for you depending on the CRM. So what I did with that what I'll call multi-highlight. Um, where did it go? Really quick. I have, I need to have more open, but that's how it is. Okay. Right, here it is. I'll just do this one. So there's a tool that I like to use. It's, it, it's a, um, it's called multi-highlight. And basically what I do is I put keywords into Okay, here's my profile. Let's see. Wait, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick on someone. Megan, I'm picking on you. And I go, I'll go into multi-highlight. I've got all kind. I've got, I've got jobs. What I'll do is I'll search for jobs uh, for people who have the skill set. So I'm looking for people to fill a job for. And I'll put keywords in here. Program coordinator. This was for a DEI position here in HR. Um, master's degrees, bachelor's, and all kinds of keywords that are in here. And there's another job in here for administrative assistant. So what I'll do is I'll turn, I'll turn that on, and let me just refresh this. And what'll happen is the words I put in that box will be highlighted on the profile. So if I go into, say, the summary, I, I see coordinator. I, I see Utah, um, I see administrative assistant. So I go, oh, I've, I found somebody that might fit what I'm, I should talk to you about a job. I'm kidding. So, but that, yeah, can, but that could yeah. apply to any, any kind of, I can't want, any, yeah, I don't, I don't poach. Um, <clears throat> but I, that could apply to any, you know, a business, for instance, if you put in keywords, like you say you were looking for accountants to, to market a service to, uh, you know, you're offering something and you put 
um, the kind of accountant you're looking for or the skills they have or, or you're looking for a CEO with a particular skill set, you can enter all that information into this multi-highlight extension on Chrome. And this has changed the game for me quite a bit. It makes it so much easier when I pull up a list of four or 500 people that I'm looking through and I'm just going through these profiles, I can see immediately either, either there's a bunch of words highlighted, there's not. And, um, and when there's a lot of words highlighted, I'm like, oh, well, let's get in there and look and see exactly what they're doing with all these words. So that has really helped me to be able to see uh, what, you know, to highlight the words that I'm looking for. And remember, all you have when you're doing these searches is just the words. The, the person can be lying about what they do, but they put the words in there. Oh, so I don't, I don't know if they, they actually can do this or not, for sure. That's why people interview, right? But that's all I can go off of. So. Yes. 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 See, doing this, I mean, just looking at your profile, Megan, just pick on you, where you're, 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 you've, got, you've got some, you know, information under each job. But I, I see a lot of profiles. I've seen people I, that were executives that don't have very much information about them. Maybe, maybe by design, but, but where somebody's public, and they don't have a very public profile, like, God, you're missing an opportunity to, to share all that information. So anyway, that, it's 1 o'clock, so I guess I should wrap. But I, I did want to give everybody an opportunity if, you, you know, if there's any ideas that came up, um, maybe to add to your profile now. or I, I'll be here for a few minutes. Are we, are, we, are we done done? Are we done at 1? Were we done at? No, no, I'm done. But I, did, I mean, if, at the afters, I mean, I can stick around here and, yeah. and chat. If you guys want to pull up your uh, profiles and we can look at them and kind of talk about it and you know if I can shed any light or share any other anything you know to help you but anyway I want to thank you very much appreciate it thank you uh -huh. Um, that we're not just all eating it ourselves. So we really do appreciate the numbers. So please check in on the table if you haven't yet. Um, and Tom will stick around for a few minutes. Yeah. We invite you to come back.